right, so up next we have the cello. Now, this is a soft cello case. There are hard cello cases as well, uh, but I don't have any here at the school, but there are some out there. Uh, you're probably gonna rent one with just a soft case. Uh, they usually come with uh, purchased cellos, uh, or rather you have to purchase them separately uh, for your cello, whether it be rented or purchased. So anyways, um, this soft case has some compartments on it on the outside rather than the inside. And uh, for one thing, it has zippers, two of them right here that opens up the main compartment where the cello is, a handle to carry it around with, uh, a little opening at the bottom where the end pin is, and that way you can stand it upright where you're traveling your, your instrument around. Uh, the cool thing about this too, it has backpack straps that you can adjust for your uh, body. Here's what that looks like. You can hold it with one shoulder or, or both. Now, if you're wearing a backpack to school, obviously you can't do that. Um, but this is nice to have when you're going to concerts uh, and other uh, gigs, if you will. <laughs> so there's the backpack straps. Uh, underneath the backpack straps, in this case, we have a compartment to hold your music, uh, your supplies, like extra strings, maybe your uh, Measures of Success book can go in there, uh, pencils, rosin, other goodies like that. Nice little compartment for it. Um, on the opposite side of the front of the case, we have a little compartment for your bow. Now, yeah, you can put two bows in there, but it's not re recommended, uh, especially for beginners. You just need one bow. And we just shove that back in there nice and easy and uh, put the Velcro back on. Another little pouch down here for the rock stop. Now I'm gonna take this out because we're about to take our instrument out. So I'm gonna place this on my chair right now. And I'm gonna place this case on its side. And I'm gonna go ahead and sit down. I'm gonna have to stand up for this. Now, this is pretty uh, self-explanatory, but to open up this case, we're gonna unzip it all the way on either end. Now, this one only goes up to about where the nut is on the cello's neck. But this one goes almost all the way around the bottom, lower bout. You can see this bottom part, or the top part flops open while the bottom part stays intact on the cello or over it because it has the end pin going through it. So we're gonna start with the end, taking the end pin out, sliding that out of its spot, and then gently uncovering it. Then we're gonna take our left hand on the neck, our right hand on the lower bout, lift it upright, keep it upright, and then just gently take the rest of the case off from the top of the scroll. Now in class, we're gonna put these cases on the, on the, against the wall. We're not gonna put them under our chair because these are just too big. So we'll put them against the wall the, towards the front of the classroom. For this case, uh, for this video, we're just gonna put, put it on the left side here, on its back. Now we have the cello out. That means we're about to ready to play. And we're gonna set it down on its side first. So make some room. Because now we're gonna adjust the end pin. Before we do that, we're gonna place a rock stop just down the ground in front of us. Anywhere is fine for now. So for the end pin, you have to decide on what length we need. Well, that's all dependent on your length of your torso, how long your legs are, the height of the chair, all these different factors. So there's not one way to measure how long the end pin you need. I usually tell in class, like the length of your forearm is where you wanna start with. We don't wanna go any farther out because these end pins do come out all the way. Some of them don't, they have a little uh, stopper for them, but not all of them do. Now, to adjust the end pin, we're gonna make sure that we undo the end pin screw, slide it out, and then kind of just find a good spot where you think you might need it. Just eyeball it, right? So when you find a spot, tighten it up all the way, by righty tighty, and this should keep it from going in and out. All right, so we're sitting back down. We're gonna grab with our left hand, our left hand on the neck, our right hand on the C bout this time, and just lift it upward. Then we're gonna guide our end pin into the rock stop, the center there. And then we're gonna sit our body along the front edge of the chair, never in the back. We wanna sit with our body like towards the front to where the back of the instrument has no way of touching the chair. It's gonna be just touching our bodies. So, we're sitting at the front edge. We're gonna put the cello between our knees, 
over our left shoulder, putting the upper bout against our chest, and I'm gonna adjust it to where it comes at an angle. Now, this is too high. Now how I know is because this C peg here is not behind my ear. This C peg should be behind my ear and the, sh uh, the neck should be more, a little bit farther over my shoulder. This is just way too high just to play cello comfortably in general. So we don't have to put it back down and just the end pin. What we can do, if you're careful, holding the instrument with your left hand, you can just take your right hand, go underneath, because the screw's gonna be on the right hand side. Undo the screw just a little bit and then just let it drop a little bit. Okay, about right there, baby. Tighten it up when you find a good spot. And then sit back into place. Okay, this is a little bit better. Probably a little too short for me, but it's all right. Now again, some things to note. The end pin is not directly in the center of your body. It's gonna be towards your right foot more than anything because you want, it to, the, you want this to go over your left shoulder. Now, if you try to center it up, you might have this situation where it starts hitting your head and you have to turn your body over to one side to play and you start getting really uncomfortable. You don't want that to happen. So we want to always sit upright and bring the instrument to us, never leaning to one side or the other. Now, once you have it in place, you want it to saddle between your knees or your, uh, your calves, whatever it is that, that is next to the lower bout, underneath the C bout. And then the top upper bout should be towards the middle of your chest. And you can play a little more comfortably this way, right? Um, now, again, I'm gonna adjust this for myself because I'm still leaning to one side, I can tell. I'm gonna make it a little bit taller. Loosen this in the screw, bring it up, tighten it down. And then for me, I need to bring out the lower part a little farther so it leans back a little farther. There we go, that's a little better. Now I'm not leaning to one side as much. I feel a little more comfortable. And then we're gonna make sure that the cello's turn in just a little bit so we can reach this A string without having to reach over when we start bowing. Make sure that it's tilted a little bit to the right and the neck is going over your left side. There we go. And now we go to plucking or playing position. Uh, before we do, we go to rest position. This is it, look. No hands, you should be able to hold it between your knees, on your chest, and of course the end pin on the ground. These are the three balance points for this instrument, okay? Now, to play in playing position, we're not gonna use our hand on the neck. We're gonna put our left hand on the right side or the left side upper bow. We're gonna put our right hand in the L shape. We're gonna put our thumb along the fingerboard here next to the bridge over the body. Never up here, that's too high. We want down farther. So it's a little more comfortable. We're not using our elbow to keep it up. And then we're gonna make our fingertip touch the D string or any string. While we're touching the tip to the string, we're gonna pull that string with our finger towards our thumb, keeping our thumb pushing against the, uh, the fingerboard and let it flick off your finger. After you flick it, you'll notice that your finger should rest on the next string behind it. So you're not strumming, you're more plucking. Strumming is when you do all the strings at once which is cool and all, but that's not our goal here. We want to pluck. Now, how do you find your D string? In plucking position, we're gonna count from our thumb. One, two, three strings out, and that is our D string on the cello. And then, of course, when you want to stop the sound, we're gonna do what's called muting. We're just gonna touch our finger onto the string to stop it from vibrating, which is making the sound. you're done playing, you can just relax. Now to put it back into the case, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna get our instrument off our body, lay it down on the side this time, because we're not adjusting the end pin anymore for our body, we're just gonna put it back in the case. Loosen the end pin screw, slide the end pin back in, tighten it down all the way, lift it back upright, and then bring the case over. And you're gonna have to maneuver the case over the top. Now, one thing you can do that I like to do is just use my body as a place to rest it on, nice and easy, and bring it over the scroll. Now, notice how I do this. I have the back of the instrument along my lap, and my right foot is just near close enough with my knees so that way if the bridge touches it, it doesn't move any farther. 
and I'm not gonna push it. I'm just gonna keep my, my legs in place rather than squeezing. So it's nice and gentle, I'm gonna bring this over, making sure that the side is on the opposite side away from me, and the zipper is near my face. Let it drop into place, carefully by holding the instrument, on the inside and the case, lay it down on its side. Then bring the end pin back inside the hole here if you have one, some of them don't. Bring over the top of the case and just zip it back up into place. Again, you don't have to zip it towards the center by the handle, but I do because it just makes more sense to me when I'm getting my instrument out or putting it away. Then you're ready to go. See ya. All right, so let's get started with the base. This is a half size base, not a quarter size base, and it is also in a soft case, meaning that there's no hard shell exterior. Now, you could get a hard shell case for this base, but I don't recommend it because it'll be twice as heavy to carry around as it is already heavy as it is. <laughs> um, so this soft case is gonna be perfect for it. It's nice and fluffy, it's nice and uh, uh, conformed to the instrument itself, and so it'll keep it fine, all right? It'll keep it nice and protected. Now, uh, in this soft case, there are some ways to carry it and transport it. You got handles in the top here if you're strong enough to carry it by one hand. You got another handle up top here to carry it with both hands. It has a shoulder strap here that you can put over your shoulder. And just bring your arm on the opposite side to carry. Or you have a handle back here. Some of these soft cases come with backpack straps attached to them or you can purchase them separately. Um, this also has a handle on the opposite side if you're left-handed dominant, another handle on top. Um, on the front of the case, it has two compartments, one for bows, and I said yes, bows, so you can put more than one bow in there. You don't really need to put more than one bow unless you play French and German style bow, which if you watch the videos on the parts of the instrument, you should know. Then we have another compartment for the rock stop, which I'm gonna leave out because we're gonna go into playing position soon and we're gonna need that. Then on the back, I'm gonna spin this around, we have another compartment for books, music, uh, polishing cloth, rosin, extra set of strings especially good for, uh, pencils, uh, all the kind of materials you need for orchestra class. Now, to take this out, we can't have it upright. We're gonna lay it back down on its side, like so. And for this soft case, they have zippers. So these zippers are in the center here. And I like to go from the bottom first, then to the top. You don't have to go that route, doesn't matter. That's just my preference. So we're gonna go to the bottom and unzip all the way down. Now, like some cases have an opening here for the, for the end pin. This one does and it goes right over it, as you can see here. That's not necessarily the best, but it still works just fine. You might have a rubber stopper. Mine's just a spike. The rubber stopper is just covering the spike. As it's threaded on the outside, you can put uh, really large rubber stoppers on there to keep it from sliding around. But if you have the rubber stopper and you try to use the end pin, uh, the end pin rock stop, it won't fit. So I take it off to use the, end, the rock stop. All right, this is zipped down all the way. I'm gonna slide it over a little bit so you can see. I'm gonna zip the other side now. This case, it's gonna go all the way over towards the top and it just kind of opens up like a cocoon. Yeah, like a butterfly, if you had the view that I had. Now, what you notice is that it's on its side, it's folded outward, and now you need to take it out of the case. It's pretty easy at this point. We're gonna take our left hand, and we're gonna grab it by the neck. Then we're gonna take our right hand, grab it on the C-bout, and just rotate it up. If you can lift it, go ahead and lift it up off the case and place the end pin on the ground. It should be able to hold itself. Now, secondly, we're gonna close the case, holding, of course, the instrument with one hand, and in class, we're gonna put these cases along the side of the wall out of the way. In this case, we're just gonna put it off to the side because uh, I can't. All right, so we're gonna get to a, a standing position for playing. There are two ways to play. There's a standing position, and there's a stool playing position. If you're gonna do the stool, we're gonna talk about in a little bit, you need something that's really comfortable on the top here, because in class, you're gonna be sitting on it pretty often, and you want it nice and soft. Let's go in the standing position first, 
and kind of talk about how we play in this position. All right, so what you need to get to is first get the right height. Now, luckily it's not sliding around and I can hold it next to me to get a good idea of how long the end pin needs to be. Now, the goal here is to have the, 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 the nut up above your eyebrow or your eye level. And this part of the, this part up here should be just a little bit over your shoulder, not completely. And so we need to have a pretty good distance. So, I mean, you just kind of have to eyeball it and kind of guesstimate where, how long your end pin needs to come out. Now to do that, we can't do it standing up. We gotta lay it down at its side. The same way you took it out of the case, you're gonna grab it with your left hand by the neck, right hand, cup it on the C-bout, and just lower it down at its side. Make sure you don't slide it around to uh, ruin the ribs of the instrument. Once it's laid down, we're gonna look at the end pin. Now, don't put your weight on it. I'm just having my hand there placed for balance. I'm not putting my weight on there. I'm gonna turn the screw lefty-loosey to loosen it up. Notice I only did like two turns. You don't have to do it all the way. Next, you're gonna pull this out. Now, make sure you don't pull it out all the way because it won't fall out, but you'll see here that it has little grooves, little notches here. That's a good way to kind of memorize where it's been placed when you're standing versus when it's sitting down or wherever, whatever it is that you're doing. You can always find out how, about how many notches it takes to, to get it ready to play. So it's a good idea to know and count while you're setting up to know how, how to do this for the next time. <laughs> So we're going to put this back in, just slide it back in if it comes out, no worries. And I'll we'll put it about mm, one, two, three notches. So when I count three notches, I got to make sure that I don't see three notches. I only see the first two. The third one is going to go back just where the nut, uh, the screw would be. And then I'm going to screw it into place. Notice how now that groove keeps it from sliding back in and out. And it's going to support a lot more weight than just the regular rod like the cello has. Okay. Pick this back up like we did earlier. That's a lot better, I like it. Now if it's a little bit too long, set it back down, push it back in, find that notch, tighten it back in, and try again. This will take a little bit of time when you first get started. But once you've got it down and you got the right, right number of notches or the height that you need, you're good to go every time. I'm just gonna slide my rock stop over because now we're gonna go into actually playing it Right now is not the playing position. We're just holding it upright. We're gonna help guide the end pin into the rock stop. How we do that is we're gonna lift it up the same way we picked it up off the ground. I'm gonna use my left lap kind of as a place where we can tilt it on. So I'm gonna put my left lap right behind the base, my right foot out. I'm gonna lean this back and dip over. And I'll find the end pin inside the rock stop. Now, if you're just too uncomfortable doing that, have another student or someone at home help you do this. Or you should get a mirror, stand in front of a mirror and make sure that's in the rock stop or have a mirror in front of you wherever you practice. Of course, don't go to the bathroom and then try to bring it back, you know, it's impossible. So um, now you've found it, the end pin in the rock stop, make sure it doesn't move around. It should be good, it shouldn't slide anywhere. And we're gonna now place it against the center of our body where our stomach is. This upper bout, this back rib here, not the front portion, but the back upper bout rib here is gonna go right up against where our, our uh, I guess our belt would be, yeah? And it's gonna lean up against us. It's not gonna be completely straight up. It's gonna come back down towards us, yeah? And we're gonna have to hold it up with our thumb here behind the neck. Now that's normally how we play in first position when we start playing uh, with our fingering tapes. But for the purposes of our first exercise, learning how to play the open strings first, we're just going to practice by keeping our left hand on the upper bout on the left side. Now, you saw me plucking. We're going to do pizzicato. Um, make sure, by the way, that your feet are shoulder width apart behind the base, not to one side or the other. This is going to, again, be mostly against your body at an angle, using the back rib against the belt area, leaning towards you. Now, you're going to take your right hand, make an backwards L shape. Put your thumb against the fingerboard. Now there's a big solid uh, flat space here on the fingerboard. Place it along the bottom here, along the side, not behind it, along the side. Then you're gonna take your index finger and you're gonna take your fingertip to one of the strings. In this case, we're gonna count three strings from our thumb. One, two, three. 
and that's our D string on the bass. Now to pluck it, we simply just pull the string towards our thumb, not away from the instrument, but towards our thumb sideways. And then when we flick it off our fingertip, we're gonna rest our finger on the string behind it, like so. Now, to stop the vibration, when we have a rest to make it stop making noise, we just touch it to stop it uh, from playing a sound. Or you can just do this with your finger. You have to do your whole hand. Now, if this is a little uncomfortable, you can use two fingers. Or you can use, what I like to do, is the long curvy edge of my finger, kind of like to make a hook on it and pull it to the side. So now my hand and my palm are facing down a little more, a little more comfortable for me because now I can feel all the strings and kind of feel my way around the fingerboard, down here at least. And that's how you pluck. Now, after we've gotten this uh, to play, we got to figure out how to go into sitting position because we can do that as well. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to pick this up, move it out of the way for now. We're going to talk about the stool. Make sure you get a stool where your feet can be flat on the ground. And again, a stool, not a chair. And that you have a footrest. One of these horizontal beams that goes across here. All right? At least need one. Now, when you're sitting down on the stool, the first thing you're gonna do is make sure that your rock stop is close enough. That's way too far. So I'm just gonna slide it over. Maybe a little bit closer. We'll, we'll adjust it as it goes. Then we're gonna sit along the front edge of our stool, like so. Notice that my left hand has been always on this base, never letting go. Now, I'm gonna turn my body, grab it again. See about to the neck here, or left hand. Using my left lap as an anchor to tilt this back and forth, I'm gonna guide that end pin into the rock stop. Now, I haven't changed the end pin length, so I might have to because now I'm a lot shorter than I was standing up. And I can just lift it up carefully and slide the rock stop around rather than pushing it down. All right, so first thing to do is know that this foot does not stay on the ground. The left foot actually goes on the foot rest there, and you can turn it a little bit so that it's a little more comfortable, that way it's not straight ahead. The back of the body of the base is actually going to lean up against here, while the upper belt leans up against, again, your belt area. And then your right lap doesn't really do anything, it doesn't touch the base at all. It really shouldn't be near the base because you need some space when you play the E string of your bow that it doesn't strike your leg. So you might need to have your leg out a little bit. <clears throat> actually, this is quite good. This is comfortable for me. I can play in this position comfortably. You don't have to adjust the end pin. Now, what you can do is uh, you can make it shorter, obviously, to make it fit. You don't have to do that, but that's up to you. What you're gonna do is put your left hand over the upper bow I'm on the left side. The same thing we did in the standing position, and then get our fingers to pluck either one finger, two finger, or the side of your finger to that base string that we're playing. And that's how you play it. Sitting down, simple as that. This should be pretty easy because now you can play without your hands. You can do a whole bunch of stuff like make notes in your book or in your music. You can talk to your friend, give a high five there, pass papers along. You can use this position without any hands. And I love it. This is my favorite position. Now we gotta put it back in the case. I'm gonna stand up, always have a hand on the instrument. Pick it up off the rock stop. We're gonna slide this out of the way and bring our case back. Make sure our case is wide open, all the way open, and we can then lay it back on its side, finding the longest part, the wide part, where the side of this instrument goes in. Now, the top of the case is on the uh, far side away from me. The back of the case is towards me. You gotta know which one's which. Uh, you can tell because you did it early and hopefully you paid attention which one was which. Now, the top of the case probably has a little padded area that kind of curves outward, and that's where this bridge and the string is going to go through. The back of the case is pretty much just flat. I'm going to put this back on its side in the case, lifting it up sideways, and gently placing it down. Now, you're going to have to adjust a lot of things here to make it stay in, in place. <laughs> so, step one is get the end pin back inside the base. And I like to go from the back first and kind of cover it from the bottom up. 
starting from the back. And what I'm doing here is just making sure that I have enough material so when I go to the front, I can zip it up comfortably. And again, I like to go to the bottom first and on the way, way up. So I'm gonna zip from the bottom. Keeping this together. Notice how I use the handles to help. By the way, bases, this is probably the most frustrating part is putting the base back in the case. I'm going to end the zipper right by the handles here. You don't have to, but that's what I like to do. I'm going to start at the top now, bring it down over the scroll and the neck, over the upper bow, and then this back zip close. And now you can take this however you need to take it to your next gig. <laughs>